when will I learn? Apparently not today. Okay, hello and welcome. <laughs> Ow. Hello and welcome to my bookshelf. This is one of my nostalgic sort of shelves. You can categorize my bookshelf sections into either nostalgia or chaos. If you haven't like guessed by now, either by one, my room decor or two, just my general personality, I was a horse girl growing up. I used to ride horses. I would also compete and do horse shows. And for one of the horse shows that I did, we had to do a written test and we were given books to study. That is what all these are. Here we have uh, <laughs> a stuffed animal horse that looks like what my horse used to look like. And like a jewelry box that I got when I was little. And then I have one of my favorite books from when I was little. It's a really old Clifford book. And when I was cleaning out my room, I couldn't bring myself to just put it in the basement and put it in a crate. So I put that up there. This is a little like souvenir fan I got um, when I went to go see Wicked in London a year, a little, more, a little more than a year ago. And this is a map of London that I got when I was in London. Go figure. Okay, now I have to, I have to reconfigure my whole setup. Okay, here we go. I apologize for any like lack of energy that I may have in this video. I am feeling physically unwell. <laughs> I've had a headache for like two weeks. I don't I don't know what's wrong with me. I was complaining about being sick in the last video and here we are again. Anyway, shelf two. I have two little toy cat things because I'm not a minimalist and I like to have knickknacks on every possible surface. I have a jewelry box. <laughs> that I got for my first communion because I'm religious. So this shelf is like a mixture between books that I've read a long time ago, which I want to read again, or books that I've read a long time ago and I just kind of like in their little hall of fame. For example, Challenger Jeep by, by Neil Shusterman. This one like I reread it maybe three times. I have pages like dog-eared in it. So this has been one of my favorites for years. All the light we cannot see. Another one of my favorites. If I could just like function. This section from like here on is all um, poetry books plus a couple literary magazines that I was published in a couple years ago and I kept them because I'm a narcissist. Okay, can I just like lower my desk chair? No, apparently not. Maybe I could have waited to film this until I had more professional equipment, but it's probably going to be a long time before that happens. So, <laughs> also, if you came here for quality, I have this book, this little like cross stitch kit book thing that my mom got me because I really got into embroidery lately. So I am going to do that over Christmas break and I'm very excited. I have this little like jewelry box again just to kind of add a little something to the shelf. I could have put it elsewhere but I wanted to put it on my shelf. This is kind of like a more combination of books that I want to read but I don't know exactly when I want to read them yet and books which I've recently read and I've really loved. We have... <clears throat> Normal People, Good Omens, The Shining, Wilder Girls, to name a few. I really want to read Tuesdays with Maury because when I was in high school, I actually went to talk, I guess, like a seminar by Mitch Album, And that was really interesting because he talked about like his writing process and all like the thought and the effort that went into writing Tuesdays with Maury. So that's something that I've been starting and then not finishing for uh, like three years now. So I should probably get around and, you know, read it. I also have this kind of just random stack of notebooks, which are either empty or 
have a little bit of like scribbles in them but I just keep a bunch of notebooks on hand because every once in a while I will just randomly get an inspiration for something I want to write it down sometimes my like designated poetry notebook is not on hand and if I don't write it down I will get like a vicious headache so that's why I just have a random pile of notebooks in a corner in my room please work with me okay these are some um painting slash embroidery things that I did because I am redecorating my room um and I didn't want to pay for things that I could just make myself, you know? Because this is probably like $60 at Urban Outfitters. Uh, and it wasn't, it wasn't that hard to make. Here I have more notebooks and also more like craft things that my mom got me because I was bored out of my mind. So this is like a little button making kit. I'm going to be crafting up a storm over Christmas break. <laughs> And then in here I have a bunch of my knitting stuff because I really enjoy knitting. In case you haven't noticed, a lot of my preferred hobbies are right along the lines of retirement home. Okay, moving on. Here is sort of like my academic slash classic kind of shelf. So I literally have one of my old textbooks from junior year of high school from AP US History, A People in a Nation. Basically, it was one of the better textbooks I've ever had about US history, so I figured I might as well keep it around since I am a poli-sci major. I also have On Writing by Stephen King, which is one of my favorite books that I've ever read for school. It's sort of like a combination between a memoir and like a how-to guide for how to write. It was actually one, it was actually funny. There's no one way to write, but this was really useful in teaching you how to learn how to write and how to find your own writing style. This was very enjoyable. If you're looking to find a, a guide on the whole writing and publishing process, I would say that this is a good one. Um, probably the best one that I've read because it's not really dry. A lot of the classics that I read in my AP language and my AP literature class, I did like, but I think I didn't fully appreciate them in the way that I would reading them for pleasure because I was having to annotate and analyze them and discuss them and write papers about them and so on. So those are books which I would really like to reread because I think I would get a lot more out of them this time around. On my list of ones where I'd like to do that, I have The Awakening by Kate Chopin. Oh, I really hope I'm pronouncing her name right because that's embarrassing if not. Jane Eyre, The Great Gatsby, The Scarlet Letter, and Frankenstein. So those are the plans. For example, one of the books um, which is on my TBR from that shelf, kind of like the academic slash classic shelf, is All the President's Men by Carl Bernstein and Bob Woodward. I really like investigative journalism, especially like in the book format, because that's something that I think I would like to do someday. This is also one of the most iconic stories, and in my opinion, one of the best ways to learn about the relationship between journalists and politicians and I think it's very relevant. This probably needs to move way up on my TBR list. So if we move up, here is another one of like the nostalgic shelves. I have like a little vintage mug with a cowboy hat on it and I love that and I store some bookshelf bookshelves. I store some bookmarks in that. Um I also have some Harry Potter little knickknacks like a snow globe and a couple snitches. I have all my Harry Potter related books on there, plus um, some space related things. I had, not really had past tense, I still have, but I had a very strong space slash Star Wars phase and that kind of goes up there with the Harry Potter stuff. However, a little disclaimer because I think that this is like an important distinction to make. Harry Potter was a very big part of my childhood and it really shaped my personality and how much I enjoy reading. On the other hand, wh what JK Rowling has said recently, has said and done um, with respect to trans people, um, I, I think is unacceptable. For me, that is a tricky 
subject to navigate because it comes down to whether or not you can separate the art from the artist. And, you know, personally, I think that you can never fully do that. Does it mean I will be, you know, throwing away all of my Harry Potter books? Probably not because, as I've said, they're a big part of my childhood, big part of my personality. On the other hand, that's not to say that I'm unaware or that I'm approving of the things that J.K. Rowling has said or the things that she's been accused of. People who are, you know, avid readers and have literature form such a large part of their personality, like me, need to be very conscious of that because the books, no matter how innocent they may seem, will always reflect in some part the author. So, you know, while I won't be getting rid of my Harry Potter books, if I reread them many a time soon, it's no question, you know, I will be reading it in a way that is more critical now that I know what I know about J.K. Rowling, which I obviously could never have made that connection when I was eight years old. Yeah, that's, that is that. So this is my newest bookshelf. Um, well, it's new to me. I was looking for a bookshelf that I could fit between these two tall ones pretty recently. Um, and I also wanted a whole, let's see if I can get the exposure better. Yes, I can. Okay. I also wanted a whole shelf dedicated to, um, some plants, which I got some new ones. Very excited about that. And they're already growing like really fast. So that's good because I normally, I normally end up killing the plants that I buy by accident and so far so good. This bookshelf was actually built by my great uncle who I never met. He passed away before I was born. My uncle had it in his attic um, and so this is a handmade bookshelf made by my great uncle and it just so happened to fit perfectly like, in line with the window and in between these shelves. So there you go. Fun fact. This top shelf here is like a cross between my currently reading and on like the shortlist TBR. So something that I'm planning on reading within the next month or so, roughly. This is like, my bookshelves are not that organized. Okay, I'm here for the vibes. Let's see if I can like bring this in a little bit more. Um, probably one of my favorite things I have on the shelf is this really old copy of Pride and Prejudice. Yeah, this was made in 1940 and I have Standoff and Winger, which are going to get their own video because they are, they're not necessarily about rugby, but the protagonist plays rugby and I just so happen to love rugby. So that's going to get its own dedicated video. I also have Call Me By Your Name, which I DNF'd and we're going to talk about that more in my September wrap up. I have a lot to say. I have a lot to to say. Um, oh, and also Dr. Sleep. Yeah, this is, there's going to be a little bit of rage in this one. And then over here, I have my book. So I self-published a book a little over a year ago. It's called Juvenalia. It's a collection of my poetry and my best friend Hannah drew the cover. So yeah, you can, if you are interested in reading my book, it's on Amazon. The link is both in my, what is it called? It's like the cover banner on my channel and it will also be in the description for this video and all my videos. I'm back. Um, I have a much better lighting setup now. I also made a smoothie. I don't know how I thought this would help my headache. It's just frozen fruit, um, but it helped my feelings. I'm so dizzy. I don't, I don't know what's going on. I also have The Secret History, which I'll take it out. You can see it, which I'm going to read uh, probably over Christmas break. I haven't totally decided yet, but I'm kind of thinking of like a dark academia, academia, academia. Hey Siri, how do you? I'm listening. How do you pronounce academia? I found this on the web. That literally, that doesn't help. It's not that deep.
I'm busy. Yeah, I'm thinking of reading this in the winter. The same thing with A Little Life. I already mentioned this briefly. Um, I was planning on reading it this month, but then I watched Paperback Dreams reading vlog of her crying hysterically reading that book, and I was like, well, I'm not doing that during the academic year. <laughs> can't see that. This is better. This is how I intended the vibes of my bookshelf to be. This little stack here, these bottom three are some library books, which I'm very excited about. I just, I don't want to dismantle that. I just read, this one is The Watchmen. I just finished it. I'll be talking about that in my September wrap up. Then I have The Deep by Nick Cutter, and I'm thinking of ending things by... Ian Reed, I think that's how you say that name. Um, those two I'm going to read in October and I'm really looking forward to that. I have a bunch of other books on hold coming to me from the library so I'm probably going to be doing a little book haul sometime soon. Next I have Alive, the story of the Andy survivors. Um, this is by Piers Paul Reed. This is the book, I don't know if you ever heard the phrase rugby players eat their dead. This is where that came from. Um, oh, maybe I should read that when I read Winger and Standoff. Ideas, you witnessed me having, like, a coherent idea. Awesome. Yeah, so I'll probably do that, and that's probably gonna mess me right up. Um, but then again, so will The Deep, and I'm thinking of ending things, so it's gonna be a fun time the next couple months. Okay, next I have some books which I read, um, this past month such as, you know, The Goldfinch, Hole in My Life, 500 Miles from You. Then I have, ooh, quite a few books I'm pretty excited about in here. So I have The Hired Girl by Laura Amy Schlitz. I never got around to reading it, and I really, really enjoy historical fiction. I also think that the cover is gorgeous. It's written in the format of a diary, which I always really like, especially in historical fiction, because it really feels like you're there. Okay. That is it. Those are my bookshelves. Hopefully I will be growing my collection and my time with this channel. So I'm really excited for all the books that I'm going to add to it in the future. Thank you for bearing with me. I know I was a little all over the place. I may not have been as energetic in this video, but I'm really not feeling well. Something's coming soon, which I am very excited for and hopefully you will be too. My podcast is currently in the works, so I will be posting more and more about that. I just wrote my first script and I'm now picking up some equipment so I can record it at home. Also coming soon, both my September wrap up. Um, and I have a lot of feelings, both good and bad, about the books that I read this month. <coughs> Yeah, good and bad. Just a lot, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of feelings. And also my October TBR, which I'm really excited to film because I feel like I'm a lot more prepared for it this time around. And I also know that that was my video that got the most likes, comments, and views. So it seems like you guys really liked that video too, which is great because that is what I enjoy doing. And I'm glad that you guys liked it too. That is it for today. I will see you soon. Thank you.